Of late, I've had a pinch at of uh, starting a series with answering a question, and today is no exception. I want us to answer a question that is going to enable us to delve into a new series, and the question is simply this. What's the single greatest test for a life of purpose and impact? At the end of the day, when the curtain is closing, what is the single greatest test that someone lived a life of purpose and lived a life of impact? What do you think that would be? Even as we go deep into this series, I want us to learn a few things about a life of purpose and a life of impact. Hopefully, stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. talk about life and we talk about the impact that life creates or the impact that our lives leave behind must of course be connected somehow to the life of purpose but the question will be what test are you going to put what test are you going to pass that will be the greatest test for a life of impact and a life of purpose so although I cannot remember it well Oprah Winfrey tells of a conversation that she had with Maya Angelou. And you know what she told Maya Angelou? She said, you know, at that moment in time, she had just built, uh, I think, a school in South Africa, something like that. And she, she was telling Maya Angelou, I think perhaps this will be my greatest legacy, this school that I built in South Africa. But Maya Angelou, advised her otherwise she said that you can never really tell the extent of your faithful pursuit of purpose you can't tell how it will turn out you can't be fixated on one thing and say that this is going to be my legacy of course there is a bit of push and pull you can decide i'm going to be remembered by this in fact very many coaches normally tell you to start with the end in mind write your obituary and so on and they tell you to start with the end in mind and so you can start by doing that defining how the end looks like saying that i'm going to be remembered by this and then you dedicate your efforts towards it but chances are that even once you're gone probably you might not be remembered by that you might be remembered that he wanted to build this kind of a legacy and i've come to realize that there is a paradox somewhere the paradox is that in reading from scriptures, there are records of quite a number of people who knew that their days on earth were gone and that they had lived to serve the purpose for their existence. They knew that. Jacob called his children, blessed them, and uh, put his feet on the bed and just said, Bye-bye. <laughs> and he was gone. Moses actually walked to his own death, to his own burial, to his own funeral. He set the record straight and uh, at the end of uh, the day, his greatest pursuit potentially coming to fruition, delivering the children of Israel. David, the king, he knew his day had come and so he anointed the next king, of course, under being cajoled and so on. And it says that he lived a full life. That is what is recorded about this guy. 
John the Baptist saw the efforts of his purpose on earth even when he was arrested and beheaded later. He had already fulfilled it. He had already seen the fulfillment of his purpose. Paul the Apostle, uh, this incredible man, he said, I have finished my race. I have run my race. I have finished my course. Jesus Christ said, it is finished. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a way that you can be able to come to the close of time. And you can know for sure, my time has come to the end. And you can look back and you can gauge. It is not the people that are going to give you marks. <laughs> it is not, let me tell you, the test of your impact and your purpose is not outside. Going away ahead of myself. It is not outside of you. It is in your spirit. It is in your heart. You will know. And sometimes even as we live, we will know whether we are having impact or purpose. We will know. Sometimes we might not know even as we are alive. Because sometimes we are engaged, like we've talked in the previous series, you might be engaged in a process. And the nature of a process is that it is arduous. Sometimes it doesn't denote the end. It doesn't denote the fruits, the milestones. You might be steeped deep in the middle of a process of your purpose and you have absolutely no clue. You know, maybe at times you feel disillusioned. You feel like, what in the world? I mean, what am I even doing? What's this? You feel depressed. You feel overwhelmed. And you feel like, man, why don't I just quit and just leave this thing all together? Those feelings are there as long as you're a human being. Those feelings will come to you. But the test of your greatest impact in life and your greatest purpose in life is yet to come. Don't be fed with the illusion and the lies of the process. Sometimes... There's a time, by the way, I went on social media and I said, ah, I feel so unappreciated, undervalued, undercompensated for the things that I'm doing. And someone said, told me, what you're doing is what I wish I would be doing. You are so way ahead. You know, it was so sobering. Sometimes it can be an illusion, the feelings you have right now about your purpose, about the impact you're actually creating. Just because you're not feeling out of the purpose, just because you're not feeling out of the impact, just because the numbers are not adding up, the statistics are not there, just because nobody's telling you, thank you for doing it, thank you for speaking, thank you for planting, thank you for going, thank you for nurturing, thank you for growing, thank you for building, just because nobody is appreciating, doesn't mean that is the test of your impact. The test of your impact is not necessarily there. We are, we are yet to see that. and So even as we go ahead in this episode, in this series, we're going to look at how exactly are you going to determine what is your greatest test that you are on course, that you are having purpose? What is the single greatest test for a life of purpose and a life of impact? That, has, that is what I want us to look at. And I want you to start thinking about it and even just doing a personal introspection in your life and looking back and thinking, what can I look at that can gauge what matters to me, what my purpose has been, what I have done in this life? If these guys, the Jacobs, the Moseses, the Davids, the John the Baptist, the, the Paul, the Apostles, if they had an inclination of it is finished, it is done, it is dusted. For me, what can I know? How can I know that I have nailed it? How can I know that I have nailed this life that I've been given? Although it's fleeting moments, it's just few years. There's a, there's a guy who said I've been given very few years and they're full of labor, they're full of heartache and they're full of hardship. 
But how can I know my life of impact and my life of purpose? I want you to start thinking about that. Because knowing this is important. And probably, perhaps one of the greatest things that you can ever do in your life is an introspection and a review. And I'm going ahead of myself, but a review of a daily, on a daily basis, maybe on an occasional basis, the more you review, the much better it is. But again, the question is, what is the single greatest test for a life of purpose and a life of impact? We're going to talk about that even in the episodes tomorrow and the days that follow. Until then, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.